Last night we we're finishing up after Yom Kippur. We're not done with Mitzvah Yom Kippur and the four days between Yom Kippur and Sukkot. So we learned, the last thing we're learning is you make Avdallah Saturday, I mean Mitzvah Yom Kippur. There's no Psalmim, it's not Saturday night. But you make a bracha and a candle that was lit for the entire duration of, of uh, Yom Kippur. Now, uh, after Mairev, questionable, but before Avdol, practically speaking, if you're in a shul, after Mairev, it's appropriate to do Kiddush Levana, Mitzvah Yom Kippur. Because again, you want to start off with Simcha, and it's, you're happy, Mitzvah Yom Kippur, you know Hashem forgave everybody. And one of the reasons why we do um, Kiddush Levana Saturday night, it's brought down in Allah, generally speaking, because we were dressed in Shabbos clothing. It's a mitzvah once a month, so you want to be dressed up. So we do it mitzvah Shabbos. Especially mitzvah Yom Kippur, we're happy, not only are we dress, but we're also happy because Hashem forgave us. So therefore, even if there's a levana earlier in the month, you still don't do it. Mitzvah Yom Kippur, it's customary to have a su'udah, to have a whole meal. You dip the challah in honey, and you eat the meal, and you know, like it says, a voice comes out from heaven, says, Lecha chol besimcha, go eat with simcha, because, uh, you know, Hashem already forgave us. The day after Yom Kippur the, is, go, is called in Sfarim God's Namen, God's name. It says in Alocha, you're supposed to, it's brought down Shechnach, you're supposed to wake up the day after Yom Kippur early. You want to wake up early. Why? Because like this, if you wake up late, you know, the sultan will come to prosecute the Jews. The Hashem, you see, they thought they're forgiven already, so now they're lazy. So you want to show the sultan that we're not lazy. The day right after Yom Kippur, we're, you know, getting ready to come early to Shulta Davin. But it's a very holy day because it's called God's Naman, because the four days between Yom Kippur and Sukkot, there's four days, uh, is co corresponding with the four letters of Hashem's name, Yudke Vavke. So therefore, they're very special days. Jews are occupied in mitzvahs. Uh, it says that they're busy building a sukkah, they're busy, busy uh, buying a lulav and esrik. Jews are busy in that time. In fact, there's a very interesting medrash by sukkahs. It says in the Pasuk, On the first day of sukkahs, you take the lulav and esrik. So the Medrash asks, it's not the first day, it's the 15th day of the month. Why does it say Be'yei Marishin? So the Medrash says, it's Rishin Lechesh Ben Avenis. It's the first day of the year of sinning. It says in the Medrash, why? It says like this, Rosh Hashanah, nobody sins. Okay? Aserah Simei Tshuva, you're busy doing Tshuva, you know people are still religious, you don't sin. Then you have Yom Kippur. So definitely people don't sin. Then you have the four days between Yom Kippur and Sukkot. Everybody's busy buying a lulav and building a Sukkot. There's no time to sin. So when is the first time that everybody could sit down, relax, and sin? Is on the first day of Sukkot. That's what it says in the Medrash. Because until then, you just don't have time to sin. Before that, there's Shani Yom Kippur. So it's a very special time. So people should be occupying themselves to get up early. It's called God's Nomin. Um, okay. Uh, it's the days of Simcha. Now, from Erev Yom Kippur in the morning, like we learned, you don't say Tachtu, but from Erev Yom Kippur in the morning, according to the way we hold, until the end of Tishrei, there's no Tachtu. According to many, many opinions, they say Tachtu, Everybody says from Erev Yom Kippur through Sukkot you don't say Tachnu. And Isru Chag, the day after Yom Tev for sure you don't say Tachnu. But many Paschim hold that, okay, the day after Isru Chag, you start saying Tachnu again in Torah Shchedesh. But in the city that Rebbe holds that we don't say Tachnu until Beis Cheshven, basically, until the second day of Cheshven. Why? Because the whole month is like Nisan. Why don't we say Tachnun the whole Nisan? Because most of the month is already no Tachnun, so you just make it all no Tachnun. So you learned, every Yom Kippur, then you have Yom Kippur, then you have the four days, you know, the holy days between Yom Kippur and Sukkot, then you have Sukkot. So until the end of the month, basically, primarily, you're not saying Tachnun. So our custom is we don't say Tachnun already until after the Shchedesh Cheshun, which is base Cheshun, we begin to start saying uh, Tilim again. 
Okay. Um, okay. Now we go into the mitzvah of sukkah. Now, there's a lot of laws in the building of a sukkah. Building a sukkah itself is a very important mitzvah, just the building of the sukkah. In fact, the Shulon it says, really, we should make a shechianu when we build the sukkah. Why don't we make a shechianu when we build the sukkah? Because the purpose of building the sukkah is in order to eat in the sukkah, on Yom Tif. So therefore, when you make the shechianu at Kiddush, on sukkahs, not only does it go on the Yom Tif, it also goes on the construction and the building of the sukkah. There's no mitzvah per se, you have to go build a sukkah. But building a sukkah is a mitzvah. There are certain mitzvahs you don't, uh, certain mitzvahs you have to do. For instance, you have to put on tefillin every day. You know, you have, there are mitzvahs you have to do. Lulav, you have to do. Matzah, you have to do on Pesach, lulav and sukkahs. There are certain mitzvahs you don't have to do. But if you're in a certain situation, then you have a mitzvah to do it. For instance, there's a mitzvah in the Torah called shechita, slaughter an animal. Yeah? What happens if I don't want to eat an animal? I don't want to eat meat. There's no mitzvah you have to go slaughter an animal. The mitzvah is, if I want to eat meat, I have to shech the animal. But there's no mitzvah that I have to do it. It's the same thing mezuzah, for instance. The dinner, if I have a house, I have to put up a mezuzah. What happens if I want to sleep in the street? I don't have an obligation to rent a house or buy a house to put up a mezuzah. The din is, if you have a house, then you have to put up a mezuzah. The same thing, one of the mitzvahs in the Tayyag mitzvahs is the mitzvah of giving a get. A get to your wife. So it doesn't mean there's a mitzvah to get divorce your wife. It means if you're breaking them, dissolving the marriage, it's a mitzvah to do it with a get. There's a lot of such mitzvahs that are the same thing, separating challah. If you don't want to bake challah, you don't have to a mitzvah, you have to separate, you know, when you bake challah. So there's no mitzvah that you have to buy, make dough in order to separate challah. The mitzvah is if you're making a dough, the right size, then you have to separate challah. All the, a lot of various mitzvahs. So there's no mitzvah per se that you have to build a sukkah. There are many people, many tzaddikim, that would dafke, do part of the construction of the sukkah. They'll put on some schach, or they'll do something in, in, to participate in the actual mitzvah building a sukkah. Now, the question is, why do we eat in a sukkah? So it says in the Pasuk, Ki basukah is a shaft, is b'nei Yisrael, b'tzei se eisim meretz mitzrayim. When the Jews left Egypt, Hashem put the Jews in sukkahs. That's what it says. Ki basukah is a shaft, is b'nei Yisrael. In sukkahs I placed the Jews, when they took him out of Egypt. Now what does sukkahs mean? There's two opinions in the, in the Tanoim. One opinion says sukkahs means the clouds that protected the Jews. Another opinion says, no, Hashem actually built them huts in the desert that they should live in. So the question is, the Gemara asks this question, so really sukkahs should be right after Pesach. What does the Pasuk say? I took you out from Egypt and I put you in Sukkot. So really, Sukkot should be right after Pesach. Be even before Shavuos, right after Pesach, we should have the Yom Tov of Sukkot. So it says, why don't we? So it says in Allah, in the Gemara, it says like this, because Pesach, it starts getting warm. After Pesach, it starts getting warmer. Everybody goes out to the huts, you know, to the bungalows, to the country houses. So if every Jew, would, the Jews would be leaving their homes to go out into a sukkah, you wouldn't see that it's for the mitzvah. So when did Hashem decide to make the mitzvah? So the mitzvah Hashem made after Tishrei. When it starts getting cold outside, people are coming back from the country, so to speak. Then Hashem said, now I want you to go eat in the sukkah because I want you to show, I want to show that you're doing it because Hashem took you out of Egypt and put you in the sukkah. So that's why we do it sukkahs when we do then. Uh, when a person eats in the sukkah, they have to have in mind that it's, and it's, it's interesting. Most normal, no, normally mitzvahs need kavana. Mitzvah needs kavana, intent. So the halacha is, as long as you have a general intent, I'm doing the mitzvah, because Hashem wants me to do a mitzvah, it's good. 
There's a few bits of like tefillin and sukkah that the Torah says you have to have a special intent. By sukkah it says, why do you have to says, You should know that I put the Jews in the sukkah. So therefore, the kavan in Shechon says, you have to have in mind that we're eating in a sukkah because Hashem took us out of Egypt. And if not, it's questionable if you actually fulfilled the mitzvah. Same thing with tefillin. It says when you put on tefillin, you have in When you put on tefillin, you have to think at the time you're putting on tefillin. Hashem commanded us to write the four portions of the tefillin, commanded us to put on the hand and on the, on the head that we we're binding our mind and heart to God. So over there, the Torah says clearly, by a few minutes, the Torah says exactly what you need to think. What? No, no, not you see, that Hashem put us in a sukkah when he took us out of Egypt. I said he didn't do the mitzvah properly. But over here the Pasik says if this is for Hashem. No, no. Leman Yedu Dere Sechem. Your generation should not Hashem know. The Pasik says, Pasukas Teshu Shivas Yamim. Right? Leman Teidu, that you should know. Who should know? Not Hashem. We should know. That he took and put us in the sukkah when he took us out of Mitzrayim. So over there Hashem is saying that you that you have to have in mind. It says in Allah, you're not making the mitzvah kitikuna, meaning you're not doing the mitzvah properly. But the other you yaitza. But the proper way of doing the mitzvah of tefillin and sukkah, by the way, is to know I'm doing it because Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim and, and put us in the sukkahs. That's a part of the kavan of the mitzvah that says in Shkhnor, based on it's a gemara, but anyway. Okay, now. Um, it's best to put up a, the sukkah right away. We learned because, you know, you want to show right away that you're doing a mitzvah. Um, okay, you're supposed to try to do the mitzvah. Now, halachically, you're allowed to put up a mitzvah, a sukkah. Yom Tev, obviously, you can't build a sukkah. But on Chol HaMoyed, on Chol HaMoyed, you're allowed to build a sukkah. What happened if somebody didn't build a sukkah? Now you're going into work or he went to out in a whatever, and he needs a sukkah, you're allowed to build a sukkah even during Cholomai. Obviously, Yom Tif, you can't build a sukkah, you're not allowed to build. But on Cholomai, you don't have to build a sukkah dafka before sukkahs. If somebody needs, they can build a sukkah even during Cholomai. Even the last day, Shana Rabbah, you could also, if you need a sukkah then, you can, you can build a sukkah. Because it doesn't have to be up for seven days necessarily. No, if you, no, the schach is muksa, the wall, if you want to take it apart, you can take it apart. People go on these trips with these portable sukkahs, which we'll talk about if they, how kosher they are or not. But uh, then you finish, you uh, put it away. But if you have a built sukkah, it's really, it shouldn't be muksa. You shouldn't what? It's muksa. Muksa means what? If you want to take it apart, you can take it apart. You can't use the schach for anything. But you could take it apart. Yeah, you can move schach from one place to the next. How about the actual yom itself? Let's say it's a moved over. You want to straighten it out because it's not coming. On the moed itself, And yom tov itself, only a guy could do it. No, you're doing construction. Just moving it over. So if I go guy could do it. In times of the Alter Rebbe, there's stories about Russian, it used to snow sukkis. I, mean, I remember in Chicago, we grew up, we also sat with our winter coats in the snow and sukkis, many times. But in Russia, the Alter, there's stories of the Rebbe telling the guy to clear off the sky, take off the snow from the, from the sukkah. Yeah. just wiped off the snow. Yeah. But he did it through a guy, he didn't do it himself.